good afternoon students i hope you're still staying safe you're still on the online teaching today it's physics class ss1 and our topic today is particle nature of matter our specific objectives are by the end of the lesson the students should be able to one state three evidence of particle nature of matter two Explain any two of the evidences stated above. Three, define atom. Four, explain the atomic structure. Five, explain molecule. Six, differentiate among the three states of matter. What is matter? In so many, matter can be defined in so many contexts. But in this particular topic today, and in physics, we define matter as something that has mass and occupies space. There has been this ancient idea that matter is made up of minute particles called atom. Then, according to the Greek philosopher Democritus, if you get a given piece of yam now, and you cut this yam, after cutting this yam to smaller sizes, you can cut this yam to other smaller sizes to a particular size that you cannot cut again. That particular indivisible side, that smallest particle of that yam, which cannot be further divided into other particles, is what we call what atom. So the atomic struct, the atomic theory of matter now assumes that all matter is made up of what those tiny particles called what atom. This particular atom is assumed, is not assumed, but it is always in a continuous what state of motion. Now, there are evidence that show that this matter, which we've talked about, has this particle nature. These evidences are, one, the Brownian motion, two, diffusion, three, osmosis, four, law of definite proportion. You find out the other ones. Remember I said, evidences that shows that matter is a particle, has particle nature or is particulate in nature, are one, the Brownian movement, or you say the Brownian motion, two, diffusion, three, osmosis, four, the law of what? Definite proportion. You get it very well. Now, if you come to the Brownian motion, remember I told you, Brownian motion. Two is diffusion. Three is osmosis. Then first one is the law of definite proportion. These are the evidence that shows that matter has particle nature. Beautiful. Now, if you come to the Brownian motion, Brownian motion is a rapid, constant, and irregular motion of a tiny particle. Get me again. Brownian motion is the rapid, constant, and irregular motion of tiny particles. This Brownian motion was named after the biologist Robert Brown who was credited with his discovery in 1827. What happened? This biologist, when he was carrying out this experiment, he suspended a polling grain on a water. Then under a, mic a microscope, he noticed that these polling grain are moving about in a zigzag motion through the water. Of, uh, not mind that the water appears to be perfectly still, but the motion of that polling grain on that still water is in zigzag. So, um, they are now asking, what happened? What causes this particular polling grain that was suspended in this water to be moving in this zigzag way? This is because of the word, the bombardment of the solid particles by the water. I come again. The reason why you see that zigzag motion, we talk about the irregular motion, just moving like this, that polling grain on that water, is because there is a bombardment of this particular solid the solid particles of this pollen grain by the molecules of the water because the molecules of the water are in 
constant motion. They're also moving. So while this thing is suspended on them, they will be bombarded, knocking them in different ways, making them to be moving about in that zigzag motion. So this has to show us that what? There is particles in this particular pollen grain, which also is doing what? It's moving. That's the Brownian motion. The same thing happens with the smoke. You can see the smoke, uh, the smoke, if you, uh, like most of you that are making use of um, tripod stand and use firewood in cooking, you see that when you are cooking, the smoke, they are not, not all the smoke are moving straight, no? Some will be moving through the ground, some will be moving up, some will be moving down. I didn't ask yourself what is happening. What is happening is that as the smoke particle is moving, it is also being bombarded by the air molecules. You know the air molecules, you cannot see, you don't see them, but they're also in motion. So they're also bombarding with the what? The smoke that is also moving. So when they bombard with this smoke, they begin to do what? They move in different what? Direction. That is it. And that's what we call what? The Brownian motion. Now, another evidence that shows that matter has particle nature is what? Diffusion. So what is this diffusion? Diffusion is the movement of molecules from the what? Region of of higher concentration to region of what? Lower concentration. For example, most of us at home, you'll be in the parlor and your mommy will spread perfume inside the room, inside her, in her um, room. But in that way, you say, hmm, 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 I'm perceiving mommy's perfume. How do you know? What happened? The molecules of that particular perfume that was spread into the room has done what, ha, ha, has, done what has spread out. It spread out up to coming to the parlor or whatever. That is an example of what? Diffusion. And that shows that what is happening, that um, this particular, this particular matter, the perfume, has what? Particles. Then, another one again, if, if you watch here, this is the solution of copper 2 tetrodosulfate 6. So what do we do? We added a copper crystal inside a water. And before you know it, there is a what? There is movement of the copper all through this water, turning the solution to blue color. So that is what the essence of what? Diffusion. Then, another evidence is what? Osmosis. What is this osmosis? Osmosis is nothing but the movement of molecules from the region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. For example, I know I'm teaching SS1 students. And in second term, in your biology, you did this osmosis and diffusion. In this osmosis, your teacher brought a yam, a this thing. You know that very, very, I know, I know you can still remember because my students are very intelligent. Beautiful. As he was performing that experiment, you can see that he added some salt Inside a, 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 the peeled yam, he added water, put it um, in another bowl of water that has biggest water. Now what happened? Some water flow from that particular one that has no salt inside the other one that has salt. So what is happening? The molecules are moving. Show you that what molecules are doing what? Moving. They're in constant motion. They flow from that way to the other side. So these are what? The evidence that show that what? Matter has particle nature. Then... After that, you now go to explain the law of definite proportion. But I'm going to give you this as an assignment. If you're coming by, get me this. The law of definite proportion. Explain to me how this law proves that matter has particle nature. Use this law to tell me about that. I'll be glad if you do it. Then now, what is an atom? An atom is the smallest indivisible particle of an element which can take part in chemical reaction. I come again. An atom is the smallest indivisible particle of an element which can take part in chemical reaction. Mark that word, smallest, and that word, indivisible. Smallest and indivisible. That they cannot be divided again. Now, this particular definition is the old definition. Why now? We don't say indivisible again because of the recent scientific researches. There have been some particles of atom. And now we just say that an atom is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in chemical reaction. Because if you come to radiation and all those things, you can see that that particular atom can still break down into other 
particles. Are you with me? Beautiful. So, this atom, my students, are made up of what? Two parts. The two parts are what? The nucleus and the what? The electron. Let me give you the structure of this atom. Beautiful. That's the structure of an atom. This atom we're talking about. If you look at this structure of an atom, you'll see I told you that it has two parts the electron and the word nucleus. This is the electron part, this is the nucleus part. Now, if you watch, you see that the nucleus consists of what? Two subparticles, which are what? The protons and the word neutron. Now, if you're asked what are the, uh, that an atom is made up of, how many particles? You say three particles, the electron, protons, and what? The neutron. Are you with me? Beautiful. So this one now is what? Is the orbit. If you watch now, the nucleus is what? Is, uh, is heavy. Now, this nucleus contains this positively charged what? Proton. This neutron now has no charge. It has no charge, but the proton has what? Charge. Now, the electron has what? A negative what? Charge. Now, if you come to their mass, electron has what? Its mass is 1 over 1840. That is, that's the mass of it. This one, its mass is 1. Proton, its mass is 1. And neutron, its mass is what? 1. Electron is negatively charged. Proton is what? Positively charged. But neutron has no charge. No charge. It has no charge at all. Beautiful. But... Watch now. I told you that this nucleus is heavy, but the electron is what? Electron is very light. And it's because of the lightness of this electron that allows it to transfer what? To transfer itself when two materials are rubbed what? Together. Remember when we did our electrostatic what? Our electrostatics in a uh, first term. Beautiful. Now, this particular this um, electron is staying in place here because of the what, electrostatic attraction between this electron and this what, and the nucleus. Now again, at times you do hear that uh, they say you that an atom is electrically neutral. You ask, what is this electrically neutral? Whenever you hear that an atom or an element or whatever is electrically neutral, it means that the number of protons is equal to the number of what electrons. That is something being what? Electrically neutral. I come again. If you hear that an atom is electrically neutral, it means that what? The number of electrons moving around the nucleus is also equal to the what? The number of what? Protons of that what? Nucleus. Beautiful. Then again, let's go to what is what? Molecule. I told you that an atom is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in chemical reaction. Then now, um, a molecule is the smallest particle of a substance which can have separate existence and still retain the chemical property of that what substance, be it an element or a what a compound. I come again. A molecule is the smallest particle of a substance which can have a separate existence and still retain its chemical property of that substance. Be it an element or a compound. It's very important. Note it. Now, what are we saying? We are saying that some of the, these atoms cannot exist alone. They come together to form a what? A molecule. For example, like now, this is a hydrogen molecule. This hydrogen molecule is made up of two atoms of what? Hydrogen. We'll give you what? Hydrogen molecule because the hydrogen cannot stand alone now again we have something like water this water molecule is made up of hydrogen and what oxygen but now 
two atoms of hydrogen, as you can see here, and an atom of what? Oxygen. That makes up what? A water molecule. And another thing about this molecule is that this molecule occurs in a very small size. Are you with me, students? Beautiful. They are very, very small in size. In the sense that their order is in this form. 10 raised to power minus 9 meter minus 10 raised to power minus 10. You can imagine such a thing. You know that this thing now, this thing now is 0 0.00. .00 Are you there? So you can imagine how infinitesimal such size is. Very good. Another one is that this molecule of a thing is always in constant what? In constant motion. The molecules are in constant motion. They are of very, very small size. Like I, 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 I told you the other time, you see this, um, that smoke is also made of molecules. Even at times, you open a, a house that is very dusty. If you open a house that is very dusty and you open a particular window from that house and maybe there are rays of light that are coming from the, a, a beam of light coming inside through that window, you'll be observing some little, little particles moving in constant motion. Boom, 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 boom. Beautiful. That's all we're talking about that. These molecules are in what? In season towards motion. Are you with me, student? Still remember what I told you? The definition of uh, molecules is of small size and is in incident what motion now let us go immediately to the what states of matter beautiful i know my students who've done the states of matter so many days let us refresh our memory again there are three states of matter is it not number one state is what the solid state another state is the what liquid state and the third one is what? The gas or gaseous state. Now, these are the three states of matter. Solid, liquid, and gas. Beautiful. Now, let us talk about solid. In a solid state of matter, the molecules of the solid are very closely packed together. The molecules of a solid, listen carefully, oh, this is the way you differentiate these things, because you're going to differentiate them. You differentiate solid from liquid, liquid from, in fact, you differentiate among the three of them. So, the molecules of solid are what? Are closely packed together. They are now closely packed together by a force, an intermolecular force, a cohesive force, and it's because of this force that are joining these particles together that make them to have a definite what? A definite shape. So when they are closely packed together, they don't move about. That's why solids, they don't flow. Because they are closely packed by these intermolecular forces. And for that reason, what they will do, they just, they will just be vibrating, vibrating. Around that fixed position. They don't move. And that gives it its what? Its shape and its what? Its volume. And that means not to do what? Not to flow. Let's take for instance, you know that your eyes blocked. Beautiful. Something is happening there. Watch out. If we call this, if we call this now a molecule, you see this now is a molecule. This one is a molecule. This one is a molecule. This one is a molecule. Because of the intermolecular forces, if this is adding intermolecular forces, see what is going to happen. These intermolecular forces now are holding this thing together. Now, what shape are you going to call this? I know you must say square. Beautiful. This is the molecule. This is the molecule. You see how the molecules are closely packed together. And this is intermolecular forces force holding this molecule and this molecule. Now, this particular molecule cannot move about. And you see the shape it gives you? Is it not? Beautiful. Now, this is what we call what? A solid. And that is how, what is happening in that your eyes block you. Uh, uh, you do like taking from your freezer. Now, if you heat up this particular molecule now, you are heating it. What will happen? It will break the intermolecular forces. As the temperature of the heat is increasing, 
what will happen? The molecules will begin to gain a kinetic energy. As they, as they gain this kinetic energy, they'll begin to break. Watch out what is happening now. This one will break. This one will break. As they, as they now break, you see that they are now in what? In different ways. This thing can flow. If I threw it, it can just move. And when this thing is now broken, that particular thing now turns to what? Liquid. Now, in this liquid state of matter, what is happening? There is still intermolecular force holding the molecules together. But these intermolecular forces of this liquid are weaker compared to that of the solid. And because of that, water has no shape. Rather, it takes the shape of a what? A container. What will you say about the water in this thing? What shape does it have? Does it have any shape? If I pour this water on the floor, will you see any shape? Can you say it's rectangular in shape? Can you say it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's triangular in shape? No. The reason is because the molecules binding the, the intermolecular forces or the cohesive force, binding these particular molecules of water together are very, very weak. So because of that, they are what? They still move about. That's why you can pour water. But water still have its definite what? Shape. Now, if you heat up this water, if you increase the temperature of the heating, what happens? The molecules of the water will gain a kinetic energy. As the kinetic energy increases up to a particular temperature called the boiling point, something happens. That weaker intermolecular force, which can be a, 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 a cohesive or uh, distant forces, will begin to do what? Will break furthermore. That is why in a gas, as, as it breaks furthermore, it will begin to do what? You will see vapor moving. I know some of you are boiling water at home. Yes, now, those vapor you are seeing that are moving up and down, they are also what? Gases. And it's as a result of what? Of breaking down the intermolecular forces, still binding the what? The molecules of the liquid. So when that thing happens, you see what? Your gas. So what's happened in this gas? What's happened here is now is that the gases, their intermolecular forces are negligible. If you don't want to talk about it, you say that it is what? Negligible. They have the weakest intermolecular forces. And that is why they what? They move in every direction, moving up and there. And because of that, you see that gas, they don't have definite shape. Because they all, even the volumes, they don't have definite volume. Rather, they just take up the volume of a container. And that is the reason why gas are compressible. You can compress it. Because it have what? Have so many spaces. It moves about in so many words, directions. Now, if you want to draw it, a diagrammatical uh, illustration of that. This one is for the solid. You can see the, this one is a molecule, this one is a molecule. But this one now is an intermolecular force. Binding these two together. This is for what? Solid. Now, when you heat up this particular solid, these intermolecular forces will begin to do what? Will begin to break. They begin to break. Now, when they break, you see that these particular molecules who are just fixed together and just vibrating here will begin to move about. They'll move about in a random motion. As they are moving, they form what is called what? Liquid. If you hit this particular liquid again, the intermolecular forces binding there will still what? Break more. And you have what is called gas. You can see that of the gas. And that is the reason why, summarily, we say that differences, differences between solid, liquid, and gas. Number one, take down. Very important. For solid, number one, solid has definite shape. Liquid has no definite shape. Why gas has no definite what? Shape. If you talk about the volume, this is about the shape. Solid has what? Definite volume. Liquid has no definite volume. 
Liquid has definite volume, sorry. Why gas has no definite what? Volume. Now, in terms of their movement, solids do not move. They don't pop. They just be vibrating about that, their fixed position. Now, liquid, they pour, and gas also pour. Now, if you come to their intermolecular forces, the intermolecular force of this solid is strong, very, very strong. It is, when compared to the three of them, it's the strongest. Why the intermolecular force that exists in the molecules of the liquid are weaker when compared to this of that of the solid, but they are greater than that of the what? Gas. Finally, if for this gas, the intermolecular force that exists in the molecules of the gas is negligible. It's very, very small. It's the weakest among the three of them. Now, when it comes to compressibility, gas has what can be highly compressed. It's highly compressible. Why the solid is not? And liquid, the same thing. But gas is highly compressible. Remember where we started, students? We started from the what? The evidences that show that matter has particle nature. Remember, I told you that there are some evidences that shows that. That show that. Number one is what? The Brownian motion. Number two, the diffusion, osmosis, and the law of what? Definite proportion. Remember, we talked about the what? The um, Brownian motion. We I told you that this is what? The movement is a constant movement, a rapid movement, an irregular movement of tiny what? Particles. Again, remember what I talked about the. Um, and I gave you an example of that Brownian motion, which I told you is the what? Um, um, a polling grain suspended in water. You see the zigzag movement of that polling grain uh, as observed by Robert Brown under microscope. And that is as a result of what? The bombardment of the liquid by the what? Water molecules. Then again, we talked about the what? The osmosis. When we're talking about it, we say that this is the movement of what? Molecules from the what? Lower concentration to a what higher concentration through a semi-permeable what membrane, as you did when you were in SS1, second term. Remember very well. That shows what there are particle natures that there is particles moving. Another one I told you is about the diffusion. Remember, I said that diffusion is the movement of what molecules from a higher concentration to a what a lower concentration. I give example the spread perfume, which you will be perceiving from elsewhere. Then, we talked about the atom. Remember what I told you about atom? That is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in chemical reaction. You no longer put the indivisible because of the recent what? Research. And remember the atomic structure. Don't forget. Know how to draw this thing. Very, very important. They might ask you to do that in examination. The atomic structure. Watch it out. You see, I told you it contains three. The electrons, the protons, the neutron. And these three things are the sub-particles of atom. Are you with me? And I told you that this electron is of negative charge, while the proton is of positive charge, while neutron has no charge. Again, electron has, its mass is 1 over 1840, while proton is 1, and neutron is what? 1. This particular electron is very, very light, and that lightness gives it its ability to do what? Migrate, when rubbed with two substances, but the, the nucleus is what? Is heavy. This one now is just the orbit where it is what? Moving. Remember also what we talked about, the states of matter. Remember them? Solid, liquid, and what? Gas, and their differences. I told you, solid has definite shape. Solid has definite volume. Liquid has no definite shape, definite volume. Gas has no definite shape, no definite volume. Very, very important. But the intermolecular force that exists among all of them is very strong in that of the words solid molecules and weakest in that of the what? Liquid, um, gaseous states or gas molecules. I remember I told you that the gas molecules are highly what? Compressed. That is why in your gas cylinder, you can feel it. Say, I need two liters. I need uh, three this one. I need uh, six liters. I need all this one. Very, very good. So my dear students, this is where we'll be ending for the today's um, lesson. I hope you have something there. Um, if you have questions, you can still do direct through the channel, I'll get back to you. For now, thank you very much. Well, stay safe.